Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. And uh, we're going straight to the recent visit by President Muhammad Buhari. Briefings, xenophobia attacks on foreign nationals living in South Africa, especially on Nigerians. Uh, this stead tension between Africa's leading economy. No doubt. President Buhari and his counterpart, Sir Ramaphosa, went into long planned talks aimed at bolstering trade ties and political cooperation as both leaders struggled to boost their flagging economies. The visit, which saw the signing of some trade deals between both countries, is viewed as a welcome development in the battered Nigerian and South African diplomatic relation. Joining us now to discuss the diplomatic trade deals of the president's visit to South Africa is Mr. Sheyi Adeyemo, a public affairs analyst and media assistant to the <laughs> South African Investment no. <laughs> okay, but well, it's just public affairs analysis. It wants oh, okay. to be addressed as. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me. So on the on, on, on this visit, we were made aware that about 32 agreements and MOUs were signed, yeah. and a huge one is the uh, that the president endorsed the establishment of early warning mechanisms that mm -hmm. should be directed by both foreign ministers. What, 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 does that, what does that mean? What's an early warning mechanism? How do they plan to put that into, into effect? Okay, I think we'll be preempting them if we say we know exactly how that will be put into effect. But I'll just explain the fact that the reason why they're looking at an early warning mechanism is the fact that the reason why some of things happen is because they don't nick them in the board before they happen. And so now the two Edo states, because what has happened is there is um, what they call the binational uh, commission that was inaugurated in 2000 uh, by President um, Obasanjo that they have now moved or sort of promoted to the heads of state. It used to be headed by the vice president. So what they're saying is maybe there's a delay in acting upon certain things. Now that it's been moved up to the heads of state, they can take decisions faster, and there will be seamless way of solving some of this problem. So the moment the warnings came up, it is not like it will be referred to, and somebody will say approval has not been given. The approval goes to the table of the person, or the signal goes to the table of the person that will give the approval. I mean, um, following up with that question, a lot of people were not happy, quote unquote, with the fact that the president still went ahead with this trip to South Africa, but then he went ahead to do it. A big question on the, on the lips of a lot of Nigerians is we've still not seen any South Africans apprehended and, you know, uh, put before in a court of law to say, okay, these are the people that caused this trouble. Why are, we, why, why are we still having this kind of thing? Why hasn't anybody been apprehended for the crimes that were committed? Okay, apprehended. A lot of people have been apprehended. Uh, yes, probably you're expecting that they would give us a list of people that have been charged and all of that. Uh, they've not done that. But I must say that the visit of Mr. Preston was very, very important. Um, yes, for since... To, uh, 1999, a lot of people have been going, President Obasanjo Ojo and uh, the president at the time, what's his name? Norma um, Saradua? No, 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 um, not, not Yara Ojo, the president of South Africa at the time, uh, that took over from uh, Mandela, what's his name? Okay. Um, um, they were the one that started yeah. NEPAD, yeah. and NEPAD is the new initiative for partnership of Africa. So, look, relationship have always been between us because everybody understands that these two countries have the biggest economy in Africa, and so their relationship must happen. And so whether... That was Tabo Mbeki. Tabo Mbeki, Mbeki, yes. Yeah. I was trying to say Tabo Mbeki. Thank you so Tabo much. Mbeki. Yeah, it was Tabo Mbeki. Uh, and, you know, so the truth of the matter is this relationship is compulsory. It must happen. It must be successful. It, it must... It, you're talking it more like you're referring to a marriage that has birthed a lot of great people. And you're saying, oh, come and divorce. That should not happen. So whatever must be done at every time must be done. Everything must be brought onto the table to ensure that this relationship is firm and very successful. This is not the first time we are having early warning signs to uh, deter mm. and, you know, curb or nip in the bud xenophobic mm. attacks. Mm. However, this is the first time we're having it at the pre presidential level. But when you look at this visit, mm. Um, how do you think that this calms things down for both countries? Is this the silver bullets we've been looking for, the straight deals, a total of 32 of them? Mm. Are, are those what we need? We need everything. So for me, it's about the people-to-people -people strategy. Mm. Uh, so for the first time, um, we're not just talking about policies 
on political level or economic level. We're saying, at least I know from the business forum angle, mm -hmm. uh, we're already talking. Fortunately, I was on the trip. I, I joined in the trip and I just got back. Now, the trip, the thing is, we are talking at the business to business level and people to people level. We're beginning to see that it is important that we sort of reactivate university games. We're beginning to see that it's important that the narrative is brought from the level of those who truly had and experienced them to the new generation of people who probably do not understand what happened or why this relationship is so important. So we're saying let us start to trickle down the story so that at the young people level, secondary and university level, we'll have games, we'll have competitions, we'll have entertainment, involvement and engagement so that now whilst they're dealing with the thing politically and from the business business angle, we're also looking at the people to people angle as well so that this marriage that is compulsory that must happen is would happen and at the end of the day it will be successful to everyone's good a lot of people say with all the marriage and the things we have on ground they don't still appreciate us they said the way our flag was oriented during the visit is a key indication of what the south africans feel about nigerians did you see the flag did you, oh, see, yeah, I saw did, did you see the way the nigerian flag, flag was Very placed and there was no official apology out of south africa for that now, you see, it is very easy to see the ugly part of anyone. Yeah, because we're sentimental already. Because uh, mm. so, a lot of our people have, have, have been made to come back to Nigeria after Nelson Mandela in 1995, when the mayhem of the military raged on, said, Nigeria, you can come to South Africa if you want. After the same Nelson Mandela that spoke out against the killing of Ken Sarawiwa, I was going to refer to that. Yeah. And so how do you... Uh, so how, so do you, how do you how marry do, that? I'm how, asking you that. How do you that, marry that? that? And I'm now saying, what we're seeing, and the likes of Thabo Mbeki yeah. saying they're taking our Because all of this started from Thabo Mbeki, and I'm shocked. Someone like Thabo Mbeki can say that. This was the same Thabo Mbeki that gave the I Am an African speech in 1996 in South African Parliament. And they started this, and the likes of Zuma saying they're taking our jobs. Now, let me... I'm foiling all of this. Let me take you back to Thabo Mbeki. Um, Oh, no, sorry, Mandela now. Mandela was the one who championed the cause of saying, look, the world, though these people contributed so much for us, let us stand against the fact that there is a military junta. Now, I'm sure a lot of people misconstrue that stand. If someone truly loves you, no matter how much you've done for that person, when the time comes to look you in the face and say to you, look, what you're doing is wrong, I think that person is even in the best position to do that for you. Let, what am I trying to say? The relationship is beyond something that you can look from, oh, so the man has a patch on the face, oh, maybe his hair is not long enough. No, it is a lifelong relationship. So we're looking for oh, where the flag was hosted and all of that. For me, there's, this relationship is deeper than that. And we must find a way of making sure it works. So I would tell you, and I will stand behind those who say the fact that Mr. President took it upon himself to honor the invitation of President Ramaphosa was a very, very good thing. And it is the start of a very good time that I believe will happen. And the part I'm most excited about is that all of us are signed on and we're not just going to allow them do it. Mm. One of the things that happened there that I love the most was um, Diana Games, who is a person who is executive director for the business uh, um, um, chamber in, in South Africa, looked the president in the face and said, look, Mr. President, you politicians, we have left you behind. We're waiting for you to please join us. So and because, that's true. Yeah. And, he, and, and the man, and I love him, and I love President Ramaphosa, immediately responded and said, look, you're saying we want a special relationship, but we have decided that we're going to have a strategic relationship because we understand that a strategic relationship is even more important than just a special relation that you're asking for. So I believe it's time, and I know the people who are involved in this, incidentally, on both sides, are people who have been involved right from the time of President Obasanjo, both down against and Mr. Folusha Phillips, who also heads the chambers here, have always been on the table. And so they've gotten to a point that he Social can Philip look at... Phillips Consulting? Yes, he's okay. the chairman of the um, uh, Nigeria South African Chambers of Commerce. Okay. And so he led our delegation and he was there. Both of them were the one who actually did the reporting. So it was Dan, D Diana for uh, South Africa and it was Folusha Phillips for yeah. Nigeria. And they tell Mr. President to the face because they have personal relationship with them. So we're at the point, and I think it's a very, very critical point for our history. 
community where we have people who are championing our cause and who knows these people, they know themselves, they know their backgrounds and they can talk to them one on one. Now that the optics of the state visit is over, uh, I wonder what your expectations are going forward for both countries. Uh, because yes, apologies have been offered, envoys have traveled, presidents have met, there was a handshake, beautiful. But the fundamental problem still remains with an unemployment rate of 29%, almost 30% in South Africa. And the rhetoric of the people of South Africa to say that other Africans have come to take our, our yes. job. So you still have that fundamental issue of unemployment, of tepid growth in Nigeria. It's also the same thing on the other side of the divide in South Africa. These fundamental problems have not been taken care of. So how really optimistic are you of all of this? What are your expectations going forward? Now, this is beyond optimism. This, mm. this, this is a clear uh, fact of the fact that I know for a fact that work has started. Um, sometimes I wonder why we Nigerians don't understand the dynamics of what is happening because mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is so we are people who will naturally say, oh, um, the guys from the north are coming to Lagos to come take our job. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is our Lagos. So oh, I am the Ome Koso. I'm the owner of the land and all of that. Now, all of those things play out when you are the citizen of a place and you are not living up to expectation to do what you ought to do to, so that you can be counted worthy for whatever you desire. I said Nobody... that's what Nigerians do in South Africa. Now, what I'm saying is that so some of the things that happen that makes all of this cry outcome mm -hmm. is happens at the level of South Africans, mm -hmm. the guys who are lowly, who feel that the only way they can be paid is because they are citizens of South Africa. The, the average South African who is hard working would not demand that because, look, the world is everybody's space. Africa, most importantly, I, I, I said to you, apart from this visit, President Obasanjo had a wonderful relationship with Thabo Mbeke. Mm -hmm. uh, President G Goodluck Jonathan had a wonderful relationship with the president at the time because he even at that time championed what they call the free trade space area that they wanted to push. So these are things they've always pushed. Now, you ask me, what's the difference between now and that time? The difference is we, in the business environment, have realized that we're not supposed to leave everything in the hands of government. We're not going to wait and fold our hands. We're beginning to activate things between Nollywood and their own entertainment industry. We're beginning to say to ourselves, it's a time to activate things between the music industry. Let's look at things between uh, the university set, youth, because at the end of the day, the narrative must trickle down. Everyone must understand it. It cannot be something that they are saying and say, you're saying, look, I don't trust but, but this But for, for, for me, as a Nigerian, I don't trust that rhetoric. You know why I don't trust that yeah. rhetoric? Well, we'll have to go on a quick break, uh, Rufai. Okay. Uh, we'll be back. Stay with us. Right. Welcome back. Uh, still the morning show here on Arise News. Uh, this has been a very exciting conversation. Uh, and we're talking about a lot of things on, on the sidelines of this. Uh, Mrs. Ashayadi, we're still here. I just wanted to ask real quickly. You see, all this rhetoric, sweet, sweet talk. Mm. I remember when Nepal started, sweet talk. You know, her chug of all African games, sweet talk, very sweet talk. But the truth is, South Africans need to address their problems. I am not the Guptas. The Guptas that captured their states, that took all the money in consensus with the last president, that built a big place for himself in Nkandla, they are not doing anything to the Guptas. We are not the ones that impoverish their people. Somebody needs to tell them that. Because with all of this government to government, people to people, it's good. Bilateral relationship. An average South African doesn't still see an average Nigerian in that light. And I'm sorry, I have no apologies for saying this. Nobody's actually. I have no apologies. Refine. So okay. if that dynamic will not change, yeah. then what we are just doing is just face saving and talk shop. They talk about 10 year visa and everything. For I mean, businessmen and for, for businessmen, a lot of Nigerians say, by Laro. I mean, why now? So we are not feeling this talk. So the guy who would, would attack me or anyone else at Oshodi does not want to differentiate between whether I'm the person who is making his life difficult from Abuja. It just says the fact that this guy is comfortable and so he must be related to them. In fact, my case is worse. Because of my image, I dress like this all the time. And so you're feeling like, oh, this guy must be very loaded in a post. Must be a distinguished. <laughs> so a guy comes at me. 
Now, so it is our responsibility. When I say to myself, oh, I'm not a politician, no, I'm just a Nigerian who is a journalist and all that, that's not enough for anyone. Nobody's going to listen to that. The thing is we all must come to the table. So, Rufai, what I want us to all understand is that this is not just about pointing fingers. It is our thing. So whether it is on the other side or on this side, we all must come together to make sure that Pointing this works. Pointing fingers aided by the ANC. It's going to be time for elections now. ANC politicians will come out and say, this same Cyril Ramaphosa was saying foreigners were taking our jobs in election campaigns last year. Let's be realistic. Rufai, it is easier to say to a stranger, leave my house and don't come again. What I want us to understand is... So we've just signed the African Free Trade uh, Zone thing. <laughs> and we are saying that the two most important economy in Africa should not find a way of ensuring that they mend their fences. So what we're just saying in a nutshell is that that will never work. Because as long as these two people be break ties, that is like a waste of time of everybody. This marriage is not just important to Nigeria and South Africa. It's important to the whole of Africa. So I believe, and I'm very, very optimistic, because there have been several games. There have been situations where we enjoyed a wonderful, wonderful relationship with, this, with South Africans. And That's it true. can't come back. That's true. And, and it, all we need to do is just believe and give this new rejuvenized strategy or strategized relationship mm. a space. And as I said, the reason why this is different is because we are looking at it from several strata, several level. Before, we would always say, oh, it is government, and we expect results. Like one of the things we said there, that, and I think is very important, and I'm happy I'm able to say it here, is that business community needs to take a lead. It is the MTNs and the rest of the world that gets the profit and loss. So they must be the one leading and pressuring government to say this is the way to go. Because if something goes down, they're not coming to Pretoria to kill or do anything. They're going to our own investment and bringing those investments down. So it is time we're actually tilting the table where the business community would take the lead and the politicians will follow us because we feel the brunt more than the politicians. But well, what have you seen that makes you think that Nigeria has made, made her point clear that enough is enough? Attacks on Africans, especially Nigerians, should not happen again. Have you seen any concrete measure to make you feel that this, is, this has come to an end? Nigeria is probably the biggest player in South Africa as regards visitors, tourists, and business people. Accounted for 64% of South Africa's trade. In West Africa. Mm -hmm. So the truth of the matter is, if you know what happened in these two weeks, and how people clearly shut down and said, no more, we're not doing this again, and what has happened to a lot of trade in South Africa and in Nigeria, then you'll understand what I'm trying to say. And that is why they had to send an envoy. Yeah. That is why they had to make sure that Mr. President visit. That is why they had to quickly organize what we went for, which is called the South African Nigerian Business Forum, because they know that if this goes on, a lot of things will go down the line that probably would not be able to fix again. But I'm glad. I'm very, very glad. Because then we're not just looking at this as an abstract thing. It's not, yeah. oh, so it's happening in Abuja. We're talking about the fact that a lot of people are beginning to say, all right, thank God, our business will come back online. Sh we'll come I back think Shaker was back in here. Uh, oh, yes, yes, there yes, were talks of, um, of, of there being a 10-year travel ban on some of the uh, uh, people that evacuated from South Africa during the time of these attacks. Is this still on the table? And also to bring it back home to those those that did suffer in the hands of South Africans, what's being done to reintegrate them back into society to make sure that this is a, a convenient transition for them? And compensation. And compensation. Can they well. go back to South Africa now? Now, a lot of, some of those people, the truth be told, I mean, I know this is not a very good time to say it, a lot of them enter into South Africa illegally. And there's no way you would go back into a country illegally no, but the ones that came back had their passport because the border authorities screened those they that had entered passport, illegally so... and they stopped them mm -hmm. and they didn't have visas. But the ones that obviously came back were obviously cleared. Let's not forget, we had Alan Oyema sitting on that chair where you're sitting now. Yeah. And he told us the brouhaha mm. around bringing them back. Mm. 
and how they delayed them for over 12 hours. So mm. those that came mm. had their legitimate papers before they could come. Others are still in South African custody still dates that didn't have their legitimate the papers. The truth of the matter is anywhere in the world, as long as you have legal um, papers and legitimate reasons to enter into any country, I mean, South Africa aside, you would always enter. Now, what we should not run away from is the fact that as a people, we also owe our people, I'm talking about leaders of Nigeria now, the responsibility of making sure that when we discuss or negotiate things on behalf of our people, we're very firm and we are able to get, because at the end of the day, it's about negotiation. So if Mr. President and the rest of his team are unable to clearly look them in the face and demand certain things, some of these things are not going to be handed over to mm -hmm. us just because. They are going to be handed to us because we have been able to be strategic enough and demand those things out of them. So sometimes we need to be careful the way we just throw some of these things into the air. Then some of these things will never come if we don't ask for them. Because usually when people go into relationship, whether it's between a man and a woman, most of the time they say, oh, it's a cap of, I don't believe in it. I know you're looking for something and the other person is looking for something. So the point is, if you think you want that thing, how well or how serious are you at so, so you're saying things. we should review the prenup we've signed with South Africa, no? No, no, no. Something has been signed. The truth of the matter is nobody knows the details. They've just given us figures. They've said to us, oh, they've done 20 Because something. I'll test that 10 years. I'll test that 10 years. I'm a frequent flyer. I'll yeah. test that 10 years. No, please. And I will go <laughs> test it. No, tr tr and I'll, I'll come back on air and, and, and tell the report. Please. I'll test it out. Please do. One of the things I know for a fact frequent is that... Flyers, right? Frequent flyers, right? Frequent flyers, business, and students. Okay. I know for a fact that Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa is a very serious person. He's not going to sign off. If you know how much had gone down and how long they've been discussing this he, visa, and 10 years thing, it's been so long. So a lot of discussion have gone down. A lot of research have gone down. Can this thing truly pay us? Argument upon argument upon argument. The um, Minister of Tourism, um, Anakon, was here. I had a one on one with him. We've been talking about this for a long time because, like you said earlier, probably not a special uh, media thing, guys, to try to add, uh, uh, introduce me earlier, but I have a very strong relationship with the South African High Commission and South African Tourism. And a lot of people will usually ask me certain things. And so when I'm asked, I take it back to them. And every time we have said to them, look, you're making our jobs difficult because at the end of the day, Nigerians are angry. And I tell you, a lot of steps. It is just that as a people, I know for a fact that they will never take a decision that they will retract. So usually it seems like it takes more time, you know, ordinary when compared to the way sometimes we take our decisions. But when they take decisions, I can assure you that that decision has been taken because due diligence had gone into it. Well, let's hope that this provides a permanent solution to the interest of Nigeria and Nigerians in South Africa and of course, uh, South Africa's end as well. Thank you so much. I promise you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> <laughs>